clothing factory in the heart of Dongguan, a boom town in South China's Pearl River Delta. These workers are the muscle behind the country's economic rise. But success has brought unexpected challenges. They can now command salaries double or even triple that of workers in South and Southeast Asia. With costs soaring, the man in charge of finances here tells me the Hong Kong-based owners considered leaving the country. If we don't change, we have to close the shut down the factory in China. But we really have that, you know, you know, uh, ambition that we want to be the last factory in China. Well, these are the T-shirts that the Crystal Group started out making. Very classic, very plain. But as their costs grew, they had to start doing something very different. So they started making T-shirts with more embellishment, more ruffles, that allowed them to charge more and to make more profit. Officials had relied on cheap labor and beneficial exchange rates to achieve average economic growth of almost 20 percent a year for the past three decades. That business model is no longer viable. Low-end, low-value added factories will have to move inland or leave China. Companies with strong brands, those with their own technology or high-end manufacturers will stay and continue to flourish. This science park in the nearby city of Shenzhen is what officials hope will be the future of the Pearl River Delta. Inside, Kumai Technologies develops software for supermarkets, restaurants and bars to keep track of their inventory. Its main market is in China rather than overseas. It employs skilled, educated young workers. South China's economic transformation is just beginning, but its intention is clear. Foreign investors keen to profit from China would be wise to keep up with this trend-setting region. Juliana Liu, BBC News, in China's Pearl River Delta.